We are talking parenting and those toddler tantrums are all a part of growing up. Don't you just love them? But what if they escalate to extremes? How do we teach our littlies to express their anger? Joining us today on the Admum Pedia Pro 3 Coffee Group is psychologist Sarah Chatwin and from the Parenting Place, John Cowan. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Oh, we could go on for days about this subject. Couldn't we just? Uh, yes. Sarah, why do toddlers throw tantrums? Well, the research suggests that they are going to throw tantrums because it is their means of communication. If they are hungry, unhappy, in need of a cuddle. This is what littlies do to get your attention and to get that kind of stuff. So it's, you know, we, we have to look at it less as a, a nasty behaviour yeah. and more as a means of communication. Kind of like cats meowing when they want some food. <laughs> exactly, not yeah. quite so as It's an nice. immature <laughs> attempt at communication. Uh, so what do we do to calm the situation then, John? Well, there are calming responses, but the big thing to do is to think, how can I make this happen less and less in the future? Mm. All good discipline and parenting is not just focused on the immediate, you're also thinking the big game. And giving your kids better ways of being able to solve their problems and communicate their needs, that's the big thing. Okay, what are your thoughts, Sarah? I just think that parents can't be too tough on themselves or their children. Tantrums are going to happen. In fact, mm. John had a few tantrums as a little, he didn't you? You did, I did, we all did. So I think we just have to look at it as something, you know, rite of passage um, and learn to, to be calm if we can mm. when faced with this kind of behaviour because, you know, uh, treating a tantrum by having a tantrum yourself isn't going to work. Anger versus anger isn't mm. going to work. It's just going to accelerate mm. a situation. Yeah. So try to keep calm and just, you know, just relax and know that this too will pass. The thing is, that's what I used to tell myself all the time, <laughs> this too will pass. And it can be difficult too because parents can be tired with the toddlers as well. Right. I remember vividly being nine months pregnant and my two-year-old was lying on the side of the road because I wouldn't let him walk over the bump bumps having a massive t a tantrum. I couldn't pick him up and we're all just exhausted. Yeah. But uh, it, is, it is hard to get through sometimes. What about those other angry outbursts though, John, that maybe aren't just screaming and wailing and, you know, sort of like thumping on the floor, the ones like biting or hitting? Yeah, biting or hitting doesn't necessarily come out of anger. Sometimes it's kids just experimenting with uh, their relationships, they need to know that it's a failed experiment. <laughs> and look, I actually believe there is a place in parenting for a stern face and your, mm, okay. uh, and your growly voice. And if they hurt you, yelp. Let them know that hurt and let them see that, man, that is not on. I totally and by the agree. way, it works with puppies as well. <laughs> if they bite you, you this yelp. Is a, this is a very generalised <laughs> technique. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I yeah. used to use my eyes, my face, my voice, mm. as opposed to, you know, hitting yeah. that you're not allowed to do, of course. Mm. Um, I think that's a really valid point. Just let your children know that they are hurting, mm. that they're hurting you, that it's not comfortable and it's not nice, and you might find that they respond differently. Yeah. Well, by, the way, that, yeah, by the way, that face only works if they see it very, very infrequently. If you use it all the time, they'll just think that's the way you are. That's mm. the way they'll remember you when that's you're dead. That's the way you look. Grumpy mum, grumpy dad. Oh, and, we, and we don't want that job no. at all. The yelping is easy though, because if yeah. they do bite you, it hurts it you. Does hurt. Yeah, and get that yelp. If they bite someone else, you turn your focus and attention to the victim that's, and uh, give your attention to them so they realise that, hey, this doesn't actually work for me very well. Mm. And uh, so, yeah. so hopefully it will stop. Uh, Sarah, <laughs> yes. what should we do then about teaching our toddlers about expressing their anger then? Is there other ways? Look, I think it's okay for them to express their anger, but when you're dealing with toddlers, you're dealing with a, um, you know, a child, a literally. Mm. They're not cognitively complex. You need to be speaking in simple terms. But I do believe in honesty. I do believe you need to let them know that this thing hurts, that you can't do this. Mm. You shouldn't be hitting. So I think talking them through it, offering other options. There might be a game that you can construct with mm. them that teaches, you know, right from wrong. At the essence of this, it's about, you know, right and wrong. It's mm. not acceptable to hit, to bite, to, mm. to kick or to exhibit those kind of behaviours. But it is okay occasionally to be angry in the right yeah. circumstance. And of course, as parents, we always have to you know, acknowledge that tantrums will exist. Yeah. They certainly will do, yeah. but you're you're right. You need to teach them very young that you know, kicking people is not acceptable behaviour right. at right. any stage of their life. Uh, John, kids are allowed to be angry, though, aren't they? Seriously. That's right. The world does need a little bit more anger at the right things, but the type of anger that we're probably talking about here, you could probably see a lot less of and be happier about it. Mm. Yeah. That is true. But they, I mean, they're going to get angry if they don't get the yeah. right breakfast cereal because you know who doesn't? <laughs> can, I, can I urge you to put your, your 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 parenting specs on and look sometimes behind the behaviour. Mm. And you might just be seeing the, the, the tip of the iceberg. There might be sibling rivalry, there might be tiredness, there might be un, they might be unwell. All sorts of other issues might be 
the major cause of this tantrum and outburst that you're seeing, not just the thing that seems to be provoking it. Well, we know how we are when we're tired. That's right. Mm. And it's so very hard for parents, particularly when you have more than one. When you have one, they just have your focus. But when you have many or several, you know, you have to kind of, yeah. you know, split your time. So it's very difficult for people to, to get on top yeah. of this, but you can do it. It is quite yeah. the juggle. Top parenting tip, just have one child. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be really <laughs> great. I love my three boys. Couldn't, they're just amazing. And if you have three, you might as well have four because it's not a lot more work. So there you go. <laughs> Sorry, okay, so at what point do we realise that the tantrums might not be normal and we need to seek professional help? Look, I think um, a lot of parents go through that um, mindset where they go, gee, these are happening a lot. Mm. This is becoming a very frequent behavioural outcome for an interaction. And I, I wonder if I'm doing the right thing. If you are ever feeling that, you know, conversations with your parents or your partner or your family or your friends are not quite cutting it in terms of giving you good options, I think seek out objective advice. There's nothing wrong with that. And I think that, if you, again, if you are seeing these things frequently, and they're very mm. disruptive, and they're very uncomfortable for you and your family, mm. you probably need to consider getting some objective advice from somewhere mm. else, a GP, a psychologist, mm. John, me, and that, can be, and that can be all it takes sometimes, exactly. just having that little outside talk and going, mm, okay, this is not so bad, That's I right. can get through this. Just to refocus and give you a few options. This too shall pass. Thank you both very, very much. Thank Great you. advice as always. Our coffee group is brought to you by Anne Mumpedia Pro 3, the only toddler milk with no added sugars. Now, you, If you have any worries that you'd like addressed by our parenting panel, you can message us on the Cafe Facebook page. One contributor will win this cool ebook from Anne Mum that allows you to record your own Sweet voice. Treats, Mike. Here's a oh. special bedtime Aww. story from me just for you. And every week I say I must record a new story for Mike and every week I forget. This week's winner, you can do your own voice though, this week's winner is Kerry Ann Marie Howitt. Congratulations and thank you for your great suggestion.